Glenn Sackett, the man I worked for back in Oregon, told me something that uh, was pretty smart. He said, it's the cutoff man that can make you or break you when it comes to making uh, beehive parts out of lumber. It's, uh, you want to have the very smallest piece left over when you're through the plank, but you also want to have good parts. We're at a little bit of a disadvantage here today because we're only cutting three sizes for nuke boxes. When I used to work for Glenn, we might be cutting five or six or seven different sizes at one time and we could work around the knots and the splits and the bad parts of the lumber. I like to use the, uh, the roughest lumber for the bottom board and the very best for the ends where the, the, that piece is going to get most of the dado cuts for putting the box together. And then the sides have to be fairly good too. I don't like to have knots on any of the cuts, especially not in any of the dado cuts and especially not in any of the handles. I try to leave uh, the loose knots out, don't want any loose knots coming out in the future. And uh, that takes a little imagination as you're working, you have to look down the board. If you look down this stack of wood, you can, you can see there's an opportunity for a lot of places where you won't get a premium board and that'll end up being the bottom boards. Stuff like this will always get cut off. You can look in this scrap box and see the type of stuff we're cutting off. We want that garbage out of there. I'm pretty particular about how we put our wood and wear together. I try to have stuff that'll last 20 or 25 years. And one of the keys to that is to make sure you're using good boards in the first place. in the sideboards. It uh, looks a little precarious, but uh, if you're careful, it works pretty good. A deep box is nine and five eighths inches deep, and uh, we're making these nukes the same as a deep box and a normal bottom board. So what I've done is made the sides and the ends ten inches. It gives us an extra three eighths, which would be the strip I'd normally put on a bottom board. And we're cutting it out. We're cutting the entrance out three eighths of an inch. So. Uh, that 10 inches works out just perfectly. I'm using this shaper to do it. This works really well for making these entrances.
with this uh, automatic feeder, that'll make it a lot easier. We like to put this real thin saw cut in our bottom board. We put two of them. Um, it's only half the depth of the, the wood and it acts as an expansion joint. When the bottom boards absorb a little moisture, they can sort of cup across the, the front landing board and this helps with that a little bit. It's not absolutely necessary. Uh, nukes will work fine without it, but uh, over the years I found that it does make a difference. It's a real thin cut. It's only a sixteenth of an inch. We actually bought a really cheap skill saw blade that only has a sixteenth of an inch kerf. It works really good. As you can see, we do them to all the bottom boards. Kind of uh, acts like uh, the cuts in the back of pine siding. Occasionally, uh, shiplap siding for a house, you'll see those thin cuts on the back side of the pine siding. It's the same same idea. Okay, we've got all the pine wood cut out for the nuke boxes. The only thing left to do now is to cut out the HDO plywood for the lids. That's the same plywood we use on bottom boards and pallets and lids for our 10 frame colonies. Uh, one thing that stands out about these nuke boxes that's a little different than a normal deep hive body is that the frame rest is cut out at 3 quarters of an inch rather than 5 eighths. The reason I do that is I want to uh, exactly three-eighths of an inch B space between the top bars of the frames in the box and the flat lid that we put on there. We use these uh, cleats that are made out of pressure treated lumber for the bottom of the bottom boards. You could call them the feet or the cleat. Even though these bottom boards are going to get dipped in wood preservative, we still like to give it the, the, the double protection on the bottom, the ground contact piece of starting with pressure treated lumber. And the pressure treated lumber, it doesn't hurt to dip it again either. Pressure treated lumber isn't what it once was as far as not rotting. Anyway, we put a lot of glue on them. We, this is the only part on the nuke box that we actually use a screw. And we put a lot of glue on them. My, I tell the guys, if glue isn't oozing out when you're done, you didn't put enough on. Small, small staple in place just to keep it from walking around while we're trying to get the screws in. And we use these Torx head deck school screws that are, uh, uh, they're actually, I should say, we're using the Power Pro brand. We found that these rust a lot less than some of the others. We really like them. They're very expensive, but these are the kind of screws that won't rust over time. They're inch and a quarter screws, so we sink them about a quarter of an inch because we have about an inch and a half of material here. And you can see when we're done, there's a lot of glue oozing out, and I feel like that's what you really want. A little messy, but you get a lot to... Uh, a lot more longevity out of your bottom board that way. Okay, we got Mr. John here putting some nuke boxes together. Go ahead, John. I think the biggest mistake that anybody makes, and I've made plenty of them myself, is that they put the handle accidentally on the inside of the box or upside down, one or the other, but... Uh, John's doing pretty good. I haven't seen him do that once yet. And again, we use lots of glue. Tight bond two or three. I guess the tight bond three is probably better. Oh, 
Okay, get around you here. And John's really taking his time. He's really making the effort to do a really good job on these boxes. Puts a couple of clamps on them to hold them in place. That pulls any warp out of the wood. Gets them right into that rabbit joint really good. Again, lots of glue on the handle. John, let's have a look at that gun. Would you hold it up? Yeah. We use a grip right gun. It's a siding nailer. These nails are ring shank nails. It uh, really helps save a lot of time, this gun here. This is the nails we're using right there. Ring shank makes a huge difference. They're actually difficult to pull out. If you make a mistake and got to pull the nails out, it's hard to get them out. Um, they're commonly used for putting on hardy plank siding or pine siding on houses. Okay, thank you, John. If you're going to put bee boxes together and not use a nail gun, I would recommend using ring shank nails. Siding nails work really good. It's still an eight penny nail, but it's very thin and it doesn't split the wood so bad. We've used a lot of them. It's uh, worth going to the trouble. You get a lot less split wood. And this is the brand we use when we do nail things by hand. So for our top boards, we just uh, use some scrap HDO plywood and make these little strips to go on the ends to keep the lid from sliding on and off the nuke box. Pretty much like we do with our big lids on our big colonies. The strip is 5 eighths of an inch thick. Again, lots of glue. And then our lids will look like that when we're done. Here's the finished product, more or less. I like leaving this small space between the lip on the lid and the handle on the box because it's so easy to get a hive tool in there to pop the lids off. It's easier than trying to get in here, you know, on the edge. So we, we shoot for about a quarter or five sixteenths right there, and that works pretty good. Um, they turned out pretty good. We still got a lot of them put together. As soon as we get all the boxes and the bottom boards put together, we'll get them dipped in that linseed oil and copper naphthenate. We'll let them season until mid-spring, and then we'll get them painted. Now, we'll actually dip the bottom, the bottom board and the box separately and let them air out on pallets for you know, several months and then just before it's time to paint them, we'll take screws or ring shank nails and put the bottom boards on permanent and then we'll paint them. Again, I'm a proponent of doing it right the first time. We've taken our time to do this box well. We've got good wood. John's really taking his time putting them together. Lots of glue. He did a good job. These would be nice boxes. I, I would expect to get at least 20 years out of them, perhaps 25 if they're treated right. People ask us what we do in the winter. Do we slow down? Do we take a vacation? Do we take time off? Well, no, 
not really. Uh, we stay steady at it all winter long. We have lids, boxes, pallets, bottom boards, frames. It's just, uh, it's quite a list of chores we have this winter to do. Jesse, Louie, John, Seth, you're looking at most of the crew right here. Yep, lost the dude.